Okay, I'm assuming that we are live. Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Fellowship Friday for the Church of the Eternally Secure. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, um, we're trying something different tonight. Um, Matthias, if, uh, if you're there, uh, maybe you can let me know for sure that if we're actually live or not. Or anybody, anybody who's able, let, let me know if we are live. Uh, let me ask the chat room. Uh, chat room, uh, if you can hear me, if we're running a live program, say something so at least I know I'm not wasting my breath right now. Um, but uh, what we're going to try tonight is uh, to have a group discussion, a group hangout, uh, with, without Matthias producing it. He's, he's here, but he's, uh, I'm actually producing it myself. I've been... Uh, instructed by Matthias now for a while, uh, to, trying to learn how to do it, and I'm hoping that tonight uh, we can do it that way. That Matthias, is, it, we're not absolutely depending on him and burdening him and uh, all, for all these productions. So uh, hopefully it'll work out. Uh, let me see. We also have uh, Brother Cripps just joined us now. Uh, okay, assuming everybody can hear me, and uh, I'm not hearing anybody reply to me, so I'm. I don't know if uh, it's working, everything's working properly or not. Let me look in the chat room and see if there's anything. Testing. I don't, I don't see any uh, response from the chat room either. I'm not seeing any response from the panelists either. Yeah, I think, I think Celine said, testing one, two, three, yes, I can hear you. And they're saying, yes, they can oh, hear you. Okay, that's all I needed to know because I, otherwise I thought, well, we're not even live and I'm wasting my breath. <laughs> Not that my breath is so valuable and important anyway, guy. It's all right. Okay, let's get started. And uh, I'm going to ask everybody on the panel here first just to say hi to everybody. And from my left to right, it looks like we got Brother Dave got Jesus. Hey, do you got, you really got Jesus, Dave? Absolutely. Got him every day, all day. I, I hope I got him. I mean, I got all my trust and faith in him. I, I've seen him move in my life and I walk with him and talk with him, and he 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 moves mountains for me at times. And so I, I think he's with me. I'm pretty sure he's with me. In fact, I know he's with me. <laughs> yeah, that's good. that's good. I know that that was a head scratcher. Well, I'm. Uh, you know, we all probably uh, make this. Uh, I think it's a, a mistake to to uh, dwell on this kind of question, but wondering whether uh, the others are really saved or not. You know, we can't help but wonder based upon sometimes. The, the kind of behavior we see from professing Christians, and and, right. and then maybe we question what what their actual uh, confession of faith really is really right or not. Uh, so, but in your case, uh, I have no doubt, brother. Yeah, you you're uh, you got Jesus. Uh, uh, in that case, brother Luke, I just try to keep it simple. I said, hey, what do you what are you trusting in to save you? When the person tells me I'm trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for my sins, was buried and rose again. I got no reason to doubt that man or woman. Yeah, amen. Uh, okay, um, that's kind of uh, a good way of putting it. Uh, my question is, uh, you've all heard me say this before, these, these questions I learned from D. James Kennedy in a course I took 33 years ago called Evangelism Explosion. And it's, a, it's a, what they call diagnostic questions so that we can diagnose uh, whether we, we can conclude someone is saved or not. And uh, obviously, we can't judge it based upon their 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 how they're living their lives. But the only the only indication we can really have is ask them what they believe. So I always ask them: Are are you certain you have eternal life? Are you certain you're going to go to heaven? And if you are certain, why? Based on what? And based on their answers, I I can I can uh, determine whether I believe that they're brethren or not. Okay, next we got Brother Cripps. Uh, from, I'm working my way from left to not right. Brother Cripps, uh, want to say hi to everybody? Yeah, hello everyone. Well, hello everyone on the panel and hello to the chat. Glad to be here again for another Friday Fellowship. And I just want to say, Brother Luke, that your is valuable to me, sir. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Brother. I, I, my question to you, though, is... Uh, are you purposely trying to uh, charm us all with your silver tongue? <laughs> no. Oh my goodness! 
And no, I don't no, know, God. Not I, I don't, to... I'm I'm pretty sure that your your velvety voice is not a put on. That's just how you talk. No, but it's that like is it's the... it, yeah. Okay, you're probably getting tired of me acknowledging it, so we'll move on. No, no, I I think it's wonderful. I, I I don't think that you can say too many nice things about people. Sometimes it's nice to hear nice things about you. Yeah, that's good. All right, that's good. I just don't want I I, I sometimes worry about the, that portion of the book of proverbs that warns against the the flatterer the person who is trying to flatter someone uh and their motives are, it's, it's a question of it what are your motives by doing it and i we, trust i trust your motives brother uh, thank you thank you and and we got uh sister lisa happy you're, you're able to join us tonight sister praise the lord brother Luke. thank you for having me again yes this is by the way this is the real sister lisa this is not the imposter, Sister Paula. <laughs> I was calling Sister Paula Lisa earlier, to, you know, a bunch of times, and she wasn't answering me. And I finally realized that uh, it was not um, it was not Lisa's channel. I was talking I was talking to Paula, and so no wonder uh, Paula was ignoring me when I kept calling her Lisa. All right, that that brings us to, to uh, Sister Paula. I want to say hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody on the panel and everybody in the chat. It's good to be here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, uh, maybe everybody thinks I'm goofy tonight. I, I, I feel a little bit punch drunk uh, because I've, <laughs> I've been really through the mill the last couple of hours. Uh, you know, I, I, this week I had my uh, Internet speed uh, uh, increased and they had to come and put more wiring in and do it all. And and. Uh, uh, and then today, Matthias and I did a test run to see if I could produce this program w w without him being the producer, and it, it didn't work, and my speed was all off, and so I spent about two hours with the technical support from my ISP and, and, and uh, doing a bunch of stuff, and we finally got everything just right, so uh, I, I, I kind of got all stressed out going through that, so I'm, that's why I'm a little bit um, kind of spacey right now. Um, all right, and we got uh, Matthias. Uh, I know you're busy working, but do, would you like to say hi to everybody? Then you can ignore us if you if you like. <laughs> I wouldn't ignore you guys, <laughs> but hello everybody. And um, uh, Luke, we got to work on right now. The only thing you're broadcasting is the audio and some. Uh, uh, it looks like a chat that has nothing in it so everybody i think can hear us but uh what we were working on your visual stuff uh, it's not there there's your i see your mouse moving now okay uh i just uh click left clicked on my uh is that me oh gosh i better not do that okay Okay. Wow, now wow. I'm getting the repeat. I'm getting feedback, Matthias, so you must be having your ears. Uh, it's coming from your end, I think. Um, all right, if I click on my uh, my video picture here, uh, is that going to make... Uh, let me ask someone else to talk for a second here. Uh, uh, someone else talk, and let's see who if your face shows up or your screen shows up. Uh, I'll give it a shot. Can no. you see my, no, see it, my it, image? No. no, it didn't. it didn't happen. So, okay. All right, Matthias. Uh, whenever someone's... Sp oh, he's up there now. Wow, that's weird. It's a delay. Uh, it's a little delay, but it, it is working. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, Matthias. I guess... Well, he, let me explain to everybody. Um, you might be wondering, why am I even bothering uh, trying to produce the program um, in, rather than Matthias producing it? Um, well, there's a couple of reasons. I've been concerned about this now ever since we made this transition from the old Google Hangouts to the new method, um, is that one, uh, Matthias is producing all these programs on uh, this uh, eternally secure network now, and um, that's a lot of work, a lot of responsibility on his part. Um, so I, I think we ought to have uh, and not have all the burden on him, but also, uh, Sometimes I anticipate that Matthias might not always be available, and, and then we wouldn't be able to have a program at all. So I felt it was necessary for me to try to learn how to, to do it um, if he's not available. And uh, uh, of course, 
If you watch the Wednesday Bible study and, and you see all the scriptures being put up uh, as we're talking and on the Sunday program, he puts up all the questions on the screen and um, that, that's what I'll call the bells and whistles, the, the, the ways that the, the program, the, the production is, is elevated to a, a higher level. It's much better. But uh, in, in this, when, if I'm doing it, I'm not, I don't have the skill and ability to do all that. So we we're basically have to go back to the most simple, fundamental kind of a program. But at least we're able to do it. And uh, uh, okay, that's enough said. Now everybody knows what's going on and why. Um, let me ask everybody to, to uh, tell me why you're so blessed today. Who, who's the most blessed person in the panel? That's what I want to know. Oh, that's sad. Sad. <laughs> I'm not I'm blessed to be that. alive, man. I'm I'm blessed to be alive. I'm blessed to, to to have fellowship with brethren and sisters. I'm I'm blessed to know the Lord. I'm blessed to walk with him. I'm blessed to just have a roof over my head, food in my stomach. I'm blessed to I'm blessed to just take in my next breath and you know, one day at a time with me. You know, whatever the Lord uh, opens up in his path, his word says, you know, uh lean you know, don't lead on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and he will set your path straight. And so whatever he uh Whatever he wants to do in me, through me, on me, whatever, it would just I just take it one day at a time in faith and 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 just bless to wake up every day. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, amen. And I I don't know. I mean, I, let me flatter you too. Uh, but but let me assure you, my motivation in flattering you is is, is, is sincere. I, I'm just telling you how I really uh, see it. I'm not trying to win any points from you, brother. But uh, I love talking to you, and I think everybody else uh, lo loves loves it too because uh, we can see this great passion in you, passion for Jesus and the Bible and the and and the congregation. So uh, yeah, thank you. Um, well, thanks, brother. Uh, now you know that we've been trying to um, um, at least the last couple of weeks. Um, we've kind of made a a, a plan uh, for these Fellowship Friday programs to try to get the uh, panel and the chat room integrated more and, and uh, really uh, much more involved between the two uh, instead of a, a distinction. Uh, so let's be very careful, all of us, to look at the chat room and respond to them as, as the night goes on. So hello everybody in the hello everybody in the chat room. But before uh, we do that, I still want to know why you are so blessed. Um, maybe I'm assuming too much, uh, but. Uh, I know Brother Dave says he's he's just blessed, and uh, uh, I'm assuming other other people can uh, uh, praise Jesus right now. Is there something you can praise Jesus for right now? Anyone? Well, I can. Well, please do. <laughs> I praise God for my husband and my children and our home. I praise God that everybody is healthy. Um, I praise God that I have good fellowship in my life now and, and other believers to talk to. Mm -hmm. And um, I praise God mostly that I, I know him. And there, if ever I have a problem, I know exactly where to go. And I praise God often for his word because um, that's like an instruction booklet to life. You know how that commercial says there's an app for that? I always yeah. think anything going on in life, there's a verse for that. Mm. And uh, praise God that you know He leads me to it, and His Word is just so comforting. And I'm I'm mostly grateful for His Word. Mm -hmm. Yes, Amen. Uh, we we tend to think to take so much for granted. It, it's not just us; it's just people, people as a whole. Uh, it's very easy to get overwhelmed and consumed with a problem. Sometimes we have a lot of problems to deal with, uh, but uh, we need to always have the perspective, and and, uh, and that's why we got to always, uh, every day, you know, count our blessings. And uh, is anybody else, anybody else excited about anything that want they want to share with us? Yeah, I'm actually excited that I was able to get online this evening. I've been having trouble with my computer the last couple of hours, so. If I do get booted off, I'm letting you guys know in advance. I'll try to get back on, but I've been having a, f a few little issues with the computer. It's a blessing, uh, as Brother Dave was saying. I hope I got the name right, to be uh, in the land of the living. Praise the Lord. And, uh, 
you know, just thinking back and reflecting over the past week and or month of all the blessings that uh, King Jesus has bestowed upon us, whether they're things that we know and then things that we don't even recognize. We don't even realize the thousand and one ways that he's protected us or kept us Mm -hmm. or brought joy to our day or kept us in peace when we could have been, you know, upset by something. And it's just a blessing to have other believers to fellowship with as well, that we have the comfort of his word and his Holy Spirit. I'm just uh, thankful that I'm a believer and that I know that I'm going to heaven if I die. That is such a comfort to me Mm -hmm. as the the saying in the Bible goes, uh, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it, it's unfortunate that so few people um, have that perspective from the Apostle Paul uh, looking forward to uh, departing and being with the Lord. Uh, we, we know that to live is Christ. That, that means that as long as we are here now, uh, our, our focus is on Christ, but it's a great. our great desire is to be with him in person, and uh, mm-hmm. that is... Uh, to, to to live as Christ, but Christ, but to die is, uh, is great gain. So when I talk, whenever anybody uh, asks me how are you doing, and I say I start talking about how blessed I am and happy I am, and I said, but uh, but frankly, I'd rather be dead. You know, I, I do it to stir uh, up a conversation and and provoke some thought and questions, and and and, and that and gives me the opportunity to say, well, when I when I say I'd rather be dead, and and then I go into the Apostle Paul, what what he said and why, and why I'm looking forward to to uh, my future. So um, yeah, um, all right. Uh, who 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 else here in the panel uh, has, has some kind of a, a blessing that you'd like to? to share with everybody. I'm doing half. I'm <laughs> I, I didn't want to fall into the into the trap that you laid at the beginning because you uh, you may not have meant to do this but say who's the most blessed. I'm like I, I don't want to put myself in that position. I'm not saying I'm more blessed than anyone else. Uh, but uh, I am definitely blessed and um, something occurred to me while you were talking just about the idea, I think when Lisa was talking, um, about the idea of just feeling blessed that we're saved, feeling blessed that he uh, gave us a way to be reconciled to God through the Son, and that he loved us that much. Uh, I I didn't really fully grasp the joy that comes from that, just that part alone, until I'd gone through a few things. You know, until I had to experience some tribulation, experience some hard times. And um, before that, I just kind of took it for granted. I just kind of grew up in this idea. And it didn't really occur to me like it does now of what a blessing that actually is. Uh, especially when you realize how uh, truly broken and fallen this world is. And um, all the deceit that people are under and all the lies that are presented as truth. Um, it's a miracle that anyone's saved. And I'm not saying that in a, in a pessimistic way. I'm just saying it is a miracle um, to be in this world to actually discover that, that Christ loved you so much that he sent his son. And it's not just a theory. It's not just something some pastor said. It is real to me. To me, it's real. To me, there's evidence of that in my life, in my life and in other people's lives. And uh, any, I do look forward to, to being with him. Of course I do. Uh, but I believe that while my heart still beats and while I still breathe, um, each breath is precious because God chooses to allow us to be here. Um, and I believe it's for a reason. So uh, I, I, I want to be with him, but he's, he's the one that will decide when, when I am to go be with him or he, he returns, whatever comes first. Um, and until then, I want to be grateful. And I try to be grateful for every day. As you know, uh, Brother Luke, I, uh, when you ask me how I'm doing, it's usually fantastic or great or wonderful or amazing or whatever because I've been through a lot of things, and God has brought me through all of it. Um, I saw a meme today, and I'm not going to get it exactly right, but um, something about uh, judging from 
from today, uh, you've survived every bad day you've ever had. That's true. And every bad day that I've ever had, God brought me through it, and here I still am. Um, so I, I uh, yeah, I'm grateful and I'm blessed, and I uh, want to be a blessing to other people. I want to spread some of the joy that He gives me uh, onto others and be uh, light and salt to the world. And He gives me the strength to do that. So praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, um, Brother Cripps, uh, I, I, I really want people to listen when I speak, but I'm afraid that you listen so carefully that it, you every single word I say, you, uh, you recognize uh, uh, that, hey, uh, Luke, you just asked, uh, who's the most blessed? And then you made me question myself, why did I phrase it like that? Because... I don't think that was really a good way of expressing, no. it, asking the question, you know, uh, like right. we're comparison and it's a competition to say because who's the most blessed. So I didn't mean it that way, everybody. I'm sorry. Of course but, not. Yeah. Of course not. Uh, all right. So now, um, well, uh, since I've been trying to pry out from everybody, uh, you know, let's let's count our blessings, acknowledge some blessings right now to get started. I'll, I'll say that. Um, I had a, a very long talk last night on the phone with my uh, nephew, and, and uh, he, he lives in Washington. His name's Ken, and um, uh, I led him to the Lord many years ago, and uh, he was very unlikely uh, as far as, you know, you know, you know the kind of people that you think, well, these people are... Um, they, they would never have any use for Jesus or, or the mm -hmm. Bible and faith because because the, the life they live, they just have no interest in it. And, and it's, it seems like we probably all assume, and the world as a whole assumes, that there's certain kind of people that are likely prospects for Christianity and others that are very unlikely. That, and it's kind of surprising if, if they become a believer. Well, that was his yeah. case. And, but he's, he's a real believer. And, and uh, so I called him last night because today's his birthday. And he's uh, uh, 60 years old. Uh, I'm 68. I'll be 69 in November. So, uh, but um, even though he's my nephew, uh, we grew up. Our families were so close. It, he and his sisters, they, they grew up really more like uh, siblings of mine. He's like my younger brother. And so uh, he ha has a birthday celebration today. And... Uh, uh, so I was just very, I'm just so blessed to know that um, many, maybe I can say most of the people that I love the most, family and friends I care about, I know every one of them has heard the gospel from me. And I've, I've attempted to share my faith over the years and give them reasons to believe. Uh, but I can say that many of them are believers. So that makes that makes I'm, I'm blessed to know that because when when we really care about someone obviously we we would even like to have a stranger uh come to faith but, but the people that we love and care yeah. about the most we're really really concerned and really want them to to receive eternal life so i'm happy about that uh okay so we've all talked about now uh you know the uh, praise praise reports and i'd like to go through the chat room here uh let me see i see that um Hendrix says, is there any encouragement you can give to those who are mourning? And Papa's debating ghost followed up uh, scriptures on clinical chronic depression. So these two points here are kind of related points. Um, yeah, uh, everybody, if, if you, uh, in the chat room, if you have something, a point that you want us to respond to or a question you'd like us to answer, if you put it in all caps, uh, it'll stand out and uh, we can we can identify it and, and respond. Uh, but if you don't put it in caps, uh, as I scroll through them, I'm probably going to miss it. Uh, oh, Sister Renee put it in all caps. Tell Brother Luke I'm coming. So Renee's on her way. Uh, she'll be joining us any minute, I guess. Uh, okay, uh, so let me ask uh, uh, the, the panel here. Uh, can you respond to this point question by Hendrix? And... Uh, uh, Papa's debating uh, about depression, scriptures on depression, and let me see, how did he phrase it? Hendrix, I'm searching for it again. Uh, he put it in caps, I should be able to find it easily. Oh yeah, is there any encouragement you can give to those who are mourning? Um, 
Any any thoughts on that, anybody? Hey, brother yeah. Luca. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just think you that, didn't, Dave. Uh, you started first. You started first, bro. Go ahead. No, you got it. I, I just think that uh, Hendricks was responding to Paul Paul's ghost, and uh, Hendricks, Hendricks may have taken it in, as a morning, but I think uh, I think the original question I saw was was uh, some scriptures to help battle uh, depression, like clinical depression. So, and did he post the scriptures, or he's asking us to provide scriptures? Yeah, I think he wants. Uh, I think he was asking us to give him some. Um, I was going to give him Philippians, uh, chapter four. Mm -hmm. All right. Nick, can can and you read, believe, you want to read I it believe, to us? Uh, verses six and seven. And those and that verse reads. Well, I'll I'll say Philippians chapter four verses four through seven. And it reads, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known, or your supplication be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And for me, this, this doesn't say that God... Uh, you know, will always instantly cure any type of depression we're going through. Uh, God can heal our depression, but uh, even if we suffer with it, I think that if we uh, approach God with thanksgiving in our heart and we just uh, praise Him and, and make our supplications known unto Him, I think God will provide the strength and the peace we need to uh, pull through the storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I... Uh... Uh, uh, many, many years ago, my son went through a real crisis, and um, uh, I, I took him out of town on a little retreat for a couple of days, just the two of us, uh, trying to help him cope with this uh, tra tragic thing. And uh, I went through the scriptures uh, to, the, to en encourage him. I wish I had all those scriptures in front of me right now, but uh, so I, and I wish I had. Uh, just at the tip of my tongue, the perfect scriptures to encourage people who are mourning. I, I don't, but um, maybe some of us here can bring some scriptures to mind for that. But I know that the the book of Psalms and also the, um, the Proverbs, those are the books that we would probably go to for, for uh, uh, that purpose. Um, now, there are a couple of... Uh, Proverbs, I'm, I wish I, I'm always confusing them. Someone here I'm sure can correct me, but uh, it talks about leaning on, uh, acknowledge the Lord with in all his ways and he will direct your paths or, and, and trust the Lord with all your heart and uh, uh, lean not on your own understanding. I, 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 did I jumble those up? Does anybody know exactly <laughs> what the, how those verses go? It's trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. I think it's Thank, the Proverbs you. 3, 5, and 6, I believe. Yeah. And the by the way, the only reason I remember that is because my old church made a song to it. Yeah. Oh. Scripture yeah. songs are a great way to remember scripture. I don't regret a single one of them. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, even even the ones that had the uh, <laughs> gospel part, like um, oh, I just I just had it too. There was a song that was like, um, oh, I've decided to follow Jesus. That was the song. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I don't know if anyone else remembers that one or not. Mm -hmm. Well, you're talking about hymns. She's actually talking about scripture songs. Where we uh, we were taught songs, uh, and we sang them that the the lyrics yeah. were straight from scripture. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, you, so you're making it not not just songs that are, that. Uh, yeah, I gotcha. So, right, like uh, Joshua song. one eight. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not gonna sing it for you, but we uh, <laughs> we used to have what we called singspiration where we would get together once a month and sing these scripture songs and it really was an edifying and uplifting time. Yeah. I do have a CD and I'll tell you by next 
Friday I'll I'll get it to where we can share uh, one of the songs for a couple of them for you. First John four, seven, and eight. That's that's one that we sang. Mm -hmm. Just yes, and then you clap at the end of it. First John four, seven, and eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know the uh, uh, songs. Um, you know the the, the book of Psalms. Uh, I'm sure many of you probably know this, but I, I we always have to keep in mind that there may be some people with us who are, are, are babes or novices, and um, so sometimes we we can take a lot for granted thinking everybody knows this, but uh, the the word Psalms, P-S-A-L-M-S, -S, I'm not sure how it's actually, what it translates to, but it um, it really is songs. Uh, David, I, I guess, how would I say, 95% of all the Psalms were written by David. A lot of people think, all of them were written by him, but almost all of them were. But they were written as songs, and so they're either you can call it poetry or you can call them songs. But you know, he he played an instrument and I guess sang these songs, and and uh, so there he was. He wrote music and, and uh, lyrics, uh, and uh, I remember uh, listening to a Christian radio station a few years back, uh, a, a contemporary Christian music artist was talking about how uh, some of his songs had these profound messages uh, about of Jesus and the gospel. And, and of course, we know the old gospel hymns have the gospel, express the gospel better than you're going to find in most churches. Uh, but this, this artist said that uh, uh, if, if he had a choice of, of preaching a sermon or making a song uh, with a message, uh, the song is far better because people listen to the songs over and over and over again. Whereas, you know, you, they usually hear your sermon once. So uh, having it in the form of music, it, it is very advantageous. And I know that Cripps was uh, yielding to Brother Dave uh, when I asked, uh, you know, does, can anybody uh, provide some scriptures about, you know, helping with depression and, and mourning? And so, Brother Cripps, I didn't forget that you were ready to talk about that. Oh, I'm happy to talk about it, but I, I didn't. Didn't he say though that uh, it was about depression? I don't have any scriptures on depression. I, I was uh, thinking more about the morning, like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it wasn't necessarily just scriptures. I was just going to say that um, when when I went through, I, I uh, have had lost uh, three very very close people, and I was just going to say something about um, how important it is to. Uh, to be close to scripture and if, if I had known it was going to come up I would have dug back in there and, and found him and, and been more prepared um, but but scripture very much can help us get through uh, periods of mourning and uh, definitely more than some of the comments that people from the world make like uh, God just needed another angel just for as a for instance um, not, not helpful and also not accurate uh, that was a frustrating thing, and I've talked to other people that that have uh, lost someone, and some of the comments that people make are just uh, difficult to hear. But scripture uh, is definitely the best best place to go when you're mourning. I don't know if that's helpful at all or not, but uh... yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Sister Lisa. Uh, do, any scriptures that you go to uh, in in times of uh, sadness that you can re recommend? Yes, Brother Luke. Um, let's see. There are a number of scriptures that I refer to. Um, if he's specifically dealing with his sadness, though, that can be uh, that, that form of depression the Bible refers to as a spirit of heaviness at times. And one of the references is in Isaiah 61. And the Bible talks about the garment of praise will lift the spirit of heaviness. So sometimes I know that there's a overwhelming feeling of heaviness that can come on a person to where they feel like they can't even pray. But I found that when you can't pray, you can praise. And when you praise, it will lift that spirit of heaviness so that you can pray. Um, the The other would simply be in the new covenant and not even the old covenant as well but in the new covenant there are just 
tons of scriptures that one could refer to uh, if you write them down and you recite them when this tries to come on you and recite it out loud and boldly, you know, because you are declaring and getting an agreement what the Lord Jesus Christ has said about you and what his promises are in this word to you and for you. And they are yours. And the Bible says that Satan is under our feet. And sometimes we just have to remind our flesh of what our spiritual condition is. Okay, because your state, feeling depressed, feeling lonely, feeling alone, is not your standing. Okay, your standing remains unchanged in Christ. And so sometimes you just have to remind your flesh of the position of the spirit man. Mm. You do that by the, the word of God, the sword of the spirit against the enemy. If you remember when Jesus was taken up to be tempted of the devil, he kept saying, it is written. It is written until he finally rebuked the devil at the end and said, you know, uh, that it, it is written that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only thou shalt thou serve. Mm. To give you an example of this, um, I actually had a dream a few years back where, I, and it, it was a dream, uh, I was asleep and this entity came into the room. Now, I knew it was a dream because of when I woke from it, what the Holy Spirit told me. But this thing kind of looked like the Tasmanian devil, and it was coming after me. It had claws, and it was just coming after me, trying to claw at me. And I was standing up in the middle of the bed, and I was throwing all kinds of stuff, lamps, books, just everything at it. And it was just swatting it away like it was nothing. And then I woke up, staunch from the dream. And the Holy Spirit said, when the devil comes to you, speak the word. So um, that would be my admonishment for this uh, brother or sister. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch exactly who it was. Um, that when the devil comes to you with a spirit of heaviness. Now that doesn't mean, because we do encounter things in life that will make you sad. And there is a time for you to be sad about those things. But I'm specifically speaking to depression. Okay, you need to speak the word against that because it is a spirit that is trying to oppress you with heaviness and then it's going to start trying to bring dark thoughts and it'll start saying evil things like nobody cares about you, nobody loves you and it just takes you down that, that trail and you must speak aloud against the devil and you cast down those vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought the Bible says, to the obedience of Christ. And you will find comfort in that uh, when you do that because the Bible says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. And that's what you'll be doing when you use the word and then resist the devil and he will flee. I, I, I hope that helps you. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's prepared. That's right. Yeah. There. You know, um, I, I remember when I wanted to find scriptures to help my son um, the uh, I had a little pocket Bible. Uh, it was uh, it's called a um, Gideon, a Gideon pop, pocket Bible, and all all it had was Psalms, and uh, I think it had Psalms and the New Testament, but it also had a little um, a section in the front where it said it had subjects. And you could look up a subject, and they would list a bunch of verses that apply to that subject. So uh, I just looked up depression and and, or, and uh, uh, found the verses, and uh, that's how I was able to access them. Uh, back in in the past, you know, we it was really difficult before someone invented concordances and. Uh, um, uh, I have Strong's exhaustive concordance on my bookshelf. It weighs about, you know, five pounds, and it's uh, uh, that kind of a thing was very, very hopeful. But now it's so easy. Uh, you can just, I could take my phone and say, uh, Google, uh, show me verses, Bible verses uh, to help with depression, and boom, it's going to. It's going to list all, a lot of verses. That, you know, so it's that easy now. I would, I would do it right now 
if uh, I didn't feel like I might mess up this whole stream here by trying to multitask. <laughs> so, but it's really easy. Anybody could just ask Google or just do a search on the computer for verses to help with, with uh, depression, and that's how easy we have it now. So that's another reason to be thankful and, and the bl being blessed with this technology. Look how easy it is to study the Bible today. Mm. Yeah. I want to back uh, uh, Lisa up a little bit and just say, Brother Luke, you mentioned Psalms, and that is one of the best books to find uh, if, if you have depression or anxiety or sorrow or any of that, uh, to look at the way David expressed that. Expressed, he would always uh, just say it out loud to the Lord. He was just, he would even say, Lord, oh, you know, my heart is so downcast. You know, he was just talking to him. Um, and then it, it might even sound depressing when you read something, you're like, wow, David, you're really, really not having a good day. But then he always praises God. He expresses it and then he um, and praises the Lord and it, it, it pulls him out of it. And uh, it's a good, good way to follow. And I appreciate Lisa's comments and uh, Bud Luke bringing up that song. Yeah. Now, uh, I can hear everybody perfectly. I'm not hearing any issues at all, uh, but a couple of people in the chat room are saying that it's breaking up and stuff. Uh, is, is anybody else uh, seeing a problem? Matthias, are you aware of anything? Yeah. I, I can't tell. By, by no. the way, Pawpaw's debating ghost, uh, he asked earlier, is that Matthias on the phone? Or yeah, Matthias is here with us tonight, uh, and, and he'll uh, participate uh, when... He, when he, when he needed, but uh, he's also multitasking, uh, uh, working also. So isn't it nice? That's hey, it. Hey, Luke, that's it. Let me, uh, I saw... Go ahead. Brother Luke, I saw in the chat a little while ago, just while before I forgot, there was a prayer request if we could all pray for a brother in Christ named John, for him and his daughter and their heart issues. So if anybody's writing down prayer requests and uh, want to remember them in your prayers tonight, uh, I do remember seeing that. I just wanted to say before I forgot. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Great. Sweet. Great. Um, let me see the chat room. Uh, let's see if we can't acknowledge what's going on in there. Look at that, Lisa. Sister Lisa Hendricks says They're Lisa. Saying it's both. Uh, Hendricks says Lisa is always such a wellspring of truth and charity. Yeah. Lisa, you are loved and appreciated, Lisa. Oh, praise the Lord! Thank you. Um, blessings in Jesus' name. I appreciate that. I give all praise and honor to the Most High King Jesus, because anything that I'm able to share is through the power of His Holy Spirit. But I do thank you for your kind words. Yeah. I wanted to say something else real quick before we move too far along for the brother or sister that was experiencing this this heaviness. Um, just to throw out some scriptures for you that, that may encourage you. Uh, 2 Timothy 1, seven, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Psalms 37, 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Proverbs 35, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Mark 11, 24, therefore I say unto you that whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Psalms 28, 7, the Lord is my strength, my shield. My heart trusteth in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth. And with my song, I will praise him. Psalms 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Psalm 55, 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Romans 15, 13, now the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And Psalm 126, 5, they that sow in tears shall reap joy. Beloved, sometimes, you know, there's 
there's a scripture that says weeping shall endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and I can tell you there have been times in my life that were very dark and I felt very alone and I didn't feel like God was with me but I would remind myself put myself in remembrance of his word and that he is God and he cannot lie and no matter what I felt like his word is true and he is real and as I began to speak those things and remember those things and praise him for those things that spirit of darkness that spirit of heaviness that tried to come upon me was lifted mm. and, and it is true and you, you may have to do it several times but re remember this could be a test of your faith where the devil is coming to try to to test whether or not you truly believe he gonna put you to the test remember the Bible says let no man say when he is tempted and he is tempted of God but God can tempt no man he tempts no man so this is a trial from the dark side but that's okay because Jesus is with you the Holy Spirit is with you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world beloved mm. mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. amen thank you thank you I I was hoping that someone would uh, 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 respond to what I asked you know search and find these scriptures for us thank you sister and, and um, some of you uh, who, who you've been with the congregation for a long time and you probably are uh, saying well who's this uh, sister Lisa uh, uh, her channel is for the most high Jesus and uh, I believe she's one of the She's been one of the best kept secrets on YouTube for many years, unfortunately, uh, in that, uh, that I, I wish, I'm happy now that many more people, at least the people in our congregation, are getting to know you, Lisa, and, and uh, they're recognizing uh, uh, the, uh, how wonderful it is to have you uh, in the congregation, contributing all the ways that you do. Um, now you mentioned um, earlier you used the term um, standing in state and it, may, it reminded me of another um, YouTuber uh, that I haven't seen him produce anything for many years but his channel was uh, Street Preacher 1611 and he, you know how they make those videos with the animated characters uh, that used to be popular five ten years ago um, but he made one titled Standing in State. And, you know, I, I keep on expecting people to watch my videos, watch each other's videos, but I, then I realize that, wait a second, uh, uh, you know, I'm retired. I, I have a lot of time to watch videos and study, and, and others don't have as much time, so maybe I'm expecting too much. But I will say that uh, I've always considered that video, it's only about 10 minutes long. Uh, standing in State by Street Preacher 1611. So find it and watch it. But I, I, it's always been one of my top videos of all time because it, 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 it in, a, in a very short, simple, concise way, it, it explains that truth, this difference between our standing as righteous and saved and, and our state. Uh, it can, can change at any time. So really, I highly recommend that. Um, all right, uh, I also want to encourage everybody in the chat room um, and everybody in the panel, if you haven't already done it, make an effort to subscribe to each other's channels. Okay? Um, it just takes a second. Just And if you don't can't do it now, uh, after this video gets uploaded, go back and look at all the channels and, and subscribe. Subscribe to each other. Um, all right, uh, anything else in the chat room? Uh, uh, and here uh, in the panel, you're, anything you're, you're seeing in the chat room you want to respond to? I, um, well, I was going to respond to the depression. Please depression do. Go ahead. With a verse, if you don't mind. Um, Ecclesiastes 7.3 says, Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made better. And whenever I'm depressed or sad, my mind always goes to the scripture because it's what it's saying is, I don't know how this is, but it's clearly saying that um, something about the sadness that we go through makes our heart better. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I maybe can 
can see what he means by that because um, people I've met who have never been through any kind of heartache or sadness or rough times, um, honestly, they tend to be a little shallow. It's the ones that have gone through difficult times that um, are seem to to me to be the most real, the most caring, the most empathetic people that you'll meet. So there is going on when we're depressed, when we're low, when we're sad. Um, and I always just keep this verse in mind. Uh, mm-hmm. Plus everything everybody else said, especially all the, the verses that Lisa listed. And I know that you were the um stream was going through some buffering for a while and if you guys missed what lisa said i strongly encourage you to go back and listen to it because those were some good verses she put up yeah thank you and 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 someone asked well what is lisa's channel and i did say it uh, but she's got several posts in here and you can go to her posts and uh, click on those three dots across from her posts and you can access her channel that way so you can subscribe but her channel is for the most high jesus um and that brings us to sister paula um you know i have um, brother dave brother cripps sister lisa and talk and doctrine and uh, some others listed on my channel uh, as um, uh, favorite channels of mine and uh i sister paula I don't have your channel listed. I'm not aware of your channel. If you do have one, I'd like to know know about it so that I can put it on my list. And, and, and if you don't have a channel that you maybe you haven't done much, maybe it's time for us to encourage you to, to, to get busy producing something for your channel. Uh, well, I, I don't really have my own channel. I'm I'm the co-owner of Talking Doctrine. <laughs> All right. Okay. Not really. All right. But, I mean... If the Lord leads me in that way, I will. But I have two small children that I homeschool, so I'm kind of not really looking to do my own channel right now. But if he, if that's what he wants me to do, he'll he'll let me know, and then I'll let you know. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, that's actually the way that I would looked at it, thinking that talking doctrine is not just Matthias and uh, and, and uh, Daniel, but but uh, you also. Uh, so um, I'm glad you said that, but I, I thought maybe if you do have a, your own channel, I wanted to acknowledge it. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, looking for truth. I want to talk to you, Luke. Go ahead. Talk to me. Post something if you want to talk to me. And Okay. Anything else in the chat room that the panel would like to respond to? Other than that, let me ask the panel... Uh, oh, yeah, I got something I want to bring to your attention. You know, I've, I've talked about um, uh, one of my favorite verses in the Bible uh, about prayer is when Paul says, continue instant in prayer. I love the way it's phrased because it's kind of weird. Uh, continue instant. Uh, I mean, I, I think that if we were going to try to make it g- more grammatically correct and understandable, I would say, uh, instantly continue your prayers. Uh, that's how I interpret the meaning of it. Is that uh, we should um, we should always be in prayer unless our prayer is interrupted by a task. Because if you have to focus on a task, maybe you can't be praying at that time. But as soon as your task is over, as soon as your mind is freed up, we should instantly continue in this prayer relationship with Jesus. And uh, so I, I've repeated that many times, and it's easier said than done, but it's something we can train ourselves to do. But one thing I've, I've started doing recently is that, you know, a lot of you know that, uh, you know, I've had a lot of health problems. Well, I, I don't just resign myself to having health problems. What I do is I do everything I can to try to um, uh, study and, and apply uh, any solutions uh, is regarding nutrition and exercise and health, healthy habits and stuff. And so, you know, I, I, I do try to, uh, I've changed the way I eat and I, I do exercise every day. Well, I just recently, just this last week, decided to add walking into my routine. 
And uh, when I'm walking by myself, what a wonderful time I found for prayer. It's just me all alone and uh, uh, no distractions. And it's just the, the most natural thing to do is just to start praying as, as I'm walking. So um, uh, I, that's, I guess I'll just say uh, that's a, another praise report I have is I just discovered that by walking, uh, it, it gives me more uh, of a time, uh, frees me up so that I, my mind's not anything else when I'm walking, so it, it goes right to Jesus. Okay, anybody else have anything, any thoughts? Yeah, just so you know, Brother Luke, it's, it's, uh, I'm starting to uh, notice some glitchy stuff while, while you were talking. I don't, I don't know if there's anything that can be done about it, but, um, just uh, on the technical side, you glitching out a little bit for me, which is rare. I don't, I've never had to say that before, so it seems like it's a, a rare occurrence. Yeah. Well, one of the things I've noticed is that uh, some, sometimes uh, when we have these problems live, when I watch the program back, mm -hmm. uh, there's not a problem. It just seems to be. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, it seems to be that uh, when you're watching it live, you know, it's aggravating sometimes, but on the upload, uh, it, it, it's not reflected in the upload for some reason. Maybe Matthias can explain why. Uh, and maybe this experiment tonight is uh, showing me that this is maybe uh, uh, maybe the, not the right way to do it. But uh, I did have uh, do everything that was necessary to get my speed up. I have a really high internet speed and now for, for the program, it shouldn't be causing a problem. Mm -hmm. And praise Jesus, we got Sister Renee joining us now. So with no further ado, I know many of the people have been um, hoping Renee could make it tonight. So Sister Renee, uh, we've all been praying for you. We know you've been in Bless. pain and out of commission, but uh, I hope you're feeling better and glad you could join us. No sound, sister. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not a big deal. Whenever Jim starts school, like the first week or so, can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me yep. okay? Yeah, okay. you good, fine. He, uh, you know, he's exposed to the kids and the germs, and he's still got his tonsils, so he gets a little under the weather. And then my immune system's not great, and I feel a little bleh. But when the weather starts changing and gets and starting to even move toward the cold weather, it's harder for me. And it's nothing, you know, nothing new. I just have bad days. And when I'm in a lot of pain, I, I, I can't handle the stress, you know, because um, uh, my flesh is overwhelming me. So I, I try to take breaks that way. But I didn't want anybody to worry. There's no, like, relapse. The bone's not on the nerve. I'm doing good. It's just the regular pain that I have. And sometimes it just gets worse. Um, now I noticed that. Look, Jim Jim's got his glasses. I was just going to say, I see he's wearing glasses. They makes him even more intelligent. Yeah. Oh, did your eye view go? Because you look smart. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you must be brilliant with those coconuts, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coke I. Bottle, uh, bottle, Coke bottle glasses. Coke bottle glasses. This is on the. I, I, I did have David Benjamin in Christ. He made a video a couple of weeks that was very complimentary to me, and he referred to me as a genius.